All right. We are going to start. So we're on page 70. This is chapter 17. After all the talk about vision and looking deeper for things, it was ironic that the first thing Arthur spotted after he left Groovy Jim's was a mirror. It was leaning against some garbage cans at a house a few doors down the street. Arthur was trying to get the grocery cart to move through the slush. He'd cleared out the stuff from the week before and decided to bring the cart along just in case he needed it. When he saw the corner of something catch the reflection of a passing car, <clears throat> he sprinted toward the trash pile as if it might suddenly vanish. Yes, it really was a mirror. As Arthur tugged it out of the wet, snow-covered pile, he couldn't believe his good luck. One corner had a long diagonal crack, and there were a few specks of tarnish on the surface, but the rest was perfect, a slam dunk. He felt like pumping his fist in the air or doing some kind of victory dance. He had scored a mirror in the first five minutes, no, the first five seconds of his search. Then he realized how totally nuts it was to be celebrating a broken mirror. What in the world was he thinking? Quickly, he jammed his hands in his coat pockets and pretended to be interested in something down the street. A cop had stopped to help a VW Beetle with a flat. Arthur waited until the cop had his back turned and some other cars had passed by before he grabbed the mirror, stuck it under his right arm, and hurried to the cart. On the next street, things got even better. Arthur found a nice polished table, the kind you'd put at the end of a sofa, sitting by someone's curb. It had curved legs and some gold leafy designs painted on the top. The only thing it was missing was a drawer in the front. Since the junk man hadn't liked the straggly branches he'd left the week before, Arthur thought maybe he hadn't really wanted piece of wood, pieces of wood like branches. He'd meant pieces made of wood, like furniture, which made more sense when Arthur thought about all the broken furniture the junk man used to haul around the neighborhood in his cart. <coughs> Excuse me. In which case, the table would be perfect. Carefully, Arthur lifted the square table and set it, a, set it sideways in the cart. It was too busy, sorry, too big to carry, so he was glad he'd brought the cart. He only hoped its stubborn wheels would keep working. Top of 72. Pulling the black knit cap down farther over his head, he tried not to notice all of the cars slowing to check out what he was doing. He was sure it probably looked as if he was stealing stuff from half the neighborhood as he started down the street again with the big mirror and table legs sticking out of his cart. The wet snow was falling harder, which he was glad about. Many, uh, maybe people would pay more attention to the snow than him. Foil, coffee cans, light bulbs, those turned out to be a lot more difficult. Arthur began to realize he could keep his eyes open all day and probably never spot any of them lying around outside waiting to be picked up as a most important thing. It would be easier to find a discarded toilet. He had seen several of those already. Eventually, Arthur knew he had no choice. If he wanted to find everything on the list, he would have to look inside a few garbage cans. The first garbage can was the worst. <clears throat> Arthur chose a house where nobody seemed to be home. It was a block away from Mr. Hampton's garage. There was a green tinsel wreath on the door, but all the windows were dark. There were no cars in the driveway. Arthur waited until there were no cars coming down the street either. He tried to look like he was just passing by the empty house with an old grocery cart, checking out the neighborhood garbage cans for fun. The trash can he chose to open appeared to be pretty new, which Arthur thought was a good thing, but the metal lid was slick from the wet snow. The suction created by the water and the metal meant he had to work to get the lid free. Using just one hand to pull wasn't enough. Gloves didn't help, they slipped too much. He had to use his bare hands. He grabbed the handle and tugged, hard. With one sudden pop, the lid came off. Water splattered across the front of Arthur's coat. A lot of curse words splattered out of his mouth. As he stood there with who knows what all over him, Arthur tried to tell himself there were worse things in life. Being covered in trash water wasn't as bad as having a rusty razor held to your neck, right? Sure. Arthur exhaled slowly. He said a few more swear words to make himself feel better. Then he forced himself to take one step forward and peer into the disgusting depths of the garbage can. He would find something useful inside it no matter what. And right there on top, like they were waiting for him, were some foil TV dinner trays. Not too clean, but the list didn't say clean foil, did it? 
He pulled them out one by one, three Hungry Chef TV dinner trays. The sight of them put a familiar lump in Arthur's throat, top of 74. He used to eat Hungry Chef dinners with his dad in front of the television whenever his mother worked late at the waitressing job she had. Turkey and mashed potatoes with ex extra stuffing had been their favorite. Usually they'd eat one each and split a third. Hungry Chef and a half, his dad used to joke. Arthur had tried them again not too long ago. He'd cooked two when his mom was working late and he was watching Barbara, but he couldn't finish more than a few bites. You want to have this one? He'd asked Barbara, holding out the second steamy tray, which he hadn't even touched. No, she'd said, turning up her nose. I don't. For some reason, it really bugged him. He'd told Barbara that she was a spoiled little brat, and the whole night kind of went downhill from there. Arthur tossed the trays into his cart and slammed the lid back on the trash can. He needed to start remembering things and do his work. Checking his watch, he sighed. He still had three hours to go. The last things he collected that Saturday were the light bulbs. He just found two coffee cans and decided it was time to give up. He hoped the nice wooden table and the big mirror and all the foil trays, people had eaten a lot of TV dinners that week, would make up for not finding most important thing number one, light bulbs. But then as he was heading back to the garage, he noticed a tangled knot of discarded Christmas lights next to someone's trash, trash can. A few of the bulbs were missing, but the string had more than enough left. The, gr the junk man could even choose from two different colors, white or green. Arthur tossed the Christmas lights on top of his pile. Done. As he pushed and pulled the stubborn cart back to Mr. Hampton's garage, he decided nobody could accuse him of not following directions this Saturday, of not having vision. He'd found everything on the list, including a pretty decent table. What he really wanted to know was why. That's what kept circling through his mind. Groovy Jim had said the guy always had a reason for what he did. So what was it? Why did Mr. Hampton want coffee cans but not ginger ale cans, or light bulbs but not lamps? The list seemed totally random and pointless, but Arthur was beginning to think maybe it wasn't. So he's kind of thinking about what this, why he's doing this, like what's the point of all this? Um, and he thinks it's kind of a little bit strange. So we have six minutes. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna have us do an exit ticket.